If a hard drive is connected but does not show in my computer, here are two fixes that should get you up and running. There's also a short version of this video. If you've had some practice working on computers, you might prefer that, and there's the link. For everybody else, you don't need to be a geek, you only need to know where to click. This video is divided into three sections. With a new or refurbished hard drive, it might be necessary to initialize the drive. If the drive was previously used for something else, Linux or some other operating system, or if there was data corruption or a virus, then it might be necessary to delete data on the drive that Windows cannot read. Either way, the job is finished with a partition and format, or in Windows 7, create a new simple volume, which is the same thing with a different name. All you need to know is where to click, and where to click is in the Computer Management Console. There are several ways to open that, but I think by far the easiest way is to go through My Computer, or if you have just Computer, it's the same thing with a different name. A pause here. If you're nervous about right-clicking on things, well, we're all nervous when we go inside these machines, so please take a look at this very short video that will bring you up to speed on using the right-click. That video will open in a new window, so close that window when you're finished watching, and this video will still be here on pause. Back to business. Beginning with the first repair section, how to initialize a new or refurbished hard drive. Everything in this video is done in the Computer Management Console, and the easiest way to open that is to right-click My Computer, or Computer, whichever you have, and in the context menu that opens, click Manage. As simple as that, you're there. If you don't have My Computer, or Computer, on the desktop, then go to the Start menu. Click the Start button, and in the Start menu it's the same thing. Right-click My Computer, or Computer, the same context menu appears, and as before, click Manage. The result is the same. Whatever colors or styles are in your Windows installation makes no difference. Your computer might be set to display the list view, the icon view, or something else. But these are decorations that don't matter. It all works the same way. This is the Computer Management Console maximized in the list view, and no big surprise, we're interested in the Disk Management item. Click that, and depending on your version of Windows, you might or might not get the Initialize and Convert wizard, which in this case is not used, so if you have it, cancel it away. The problem is obvious now. Windows already has the hard drive marked as a problem, but the fix won't take long. Right-click in the gray area where the drive, which Windows calls a disk, is identified, and in the menu that appears, click Initialize. As usual, there's an Are You Sure dialog. OK that. This is a real-time view. Initializing the hard drive, or disk, takes very little time, and that part of the job is done. But the hard drive, or disk, you initialized still must be set up so Windows can use it, and that means a partition and format, or in Windows 7, a new simple volume. That's the final step in any repair, and that's the final section, section 3, of this video. The second repair section is how to clear the hard drive of files that Windows cannot read. Beginning the same way, in the Computer Management Console, click the Disk Management item. Previously, Linux was installed on this hard drive, and will be again, by the way, but there might have been corrupt files, or a virus, or something else. In any case, the solution here is the shotgun approach. Get rid of everything. The plan is to delete until there's nothing left to delete. And the way to do that is actually very simple. Right-click, and look in the context menu for the word delete. Whenever you find you can delete something, Click to delete whatever it is. Then, do that again. Keep looking for the word delete. This is not extreme, even if it sounds that way. Remember the reason for this operation in the first place. The hard drive does not appear in my computer, so it's worthless. 
If you want to recover lost data, then of course that's something else. You don't want to delete anything. But what we want to do here is make the hard drive usable, so the plan is to keep deleting until there's nothing left to delete. Sooner or later, there's no more to delete. And then it's the same as before when initializing the hard drive. There are no more choices about what to do. The context menu offers only the New Partition option, or in Windows 7, New Simple Volume, which is the same thing with a different name. So whether you initialize the drive, or you delete everything that was on it, you still come to the same place. The drive must be made usable to the Windows operating system, which is Section 3, the last section of this video. This is where we left off, both when initializing the drive and deleting unreadable data. The only thing it's possible to do is create a new partition or a new simple volume. To do that, click on New Partition, or in Windows 7, New Simple Volume. A dialog appears, and this dialog we do want. With one exception, the default values offered by the dialog are fine, so accept them. The procedure here is to keep clicking Next until the Format Partition page appears. When you come to the Format Partition page, click a check mark into the Perform a Quick Format space. A quick format is usually all that's needed, and it's a lot faster than a full format. Then, keep clicking Next, and finally click Finish. Again, this is a real-time view. This particular hard drive is only 40 gigs, which is small, so the whole partition and format, or new simple volume, takes very little time. Large hard drives take longer, but at most only a few minutes. So, now the job is actually finished, and the hard drive will appear in my computer. But, we might as well take care of one clerical job, which is to name the drive something besides New Volume, which is not very informative. As good a way as any is to rename the drive in the Properties dialog, so right-click New Volume, click Properties, and name the drive anything you like. This is a Western Digital 40 gig hard drive, so I'm naming it WD-40, no plug intended. The cursor disappears when you start typing, and reappears when you move the mouse. And that finishes the job. Just for the record, go into my own desktop, looking in my computer. There it is, hard drive, or disk, WD-40. And by the way, no, my desktop is not really that clean. I cleaned up for company. Thanks for watching.